We all understand the type of climate that we're dealing with. We're dealing with multiple offer situations. You know, I'd love to know sort of what's your why? What what, what makes you tick? Why are you so successful? Uh, and your... have a dialogue with your lawyer. Have a dialogue with your agent. Both sort of passionate about sort of what we do. Uh, again, vet your agent to make sure that they're experienced have... and they're local. I like that idea. No excuse to miss it on no Saturdays excuse. from 8 to 9. <laughs> That's right. WBZ. And now the show that gives you the latest and most relevant housing market news. Real Estate Radio Boston with financial expert Rick Shearer and legal professional Ali Alavi. Erica Wallace, Wallace uh, Consulting Group. You've got an app here that's going to save me because I don't typically do the store warranties when I buy anything. And it's because I'm too lazy to hold on to the receipts. So I spend the money and I don't use the service. What's this app? So this app will definitely help with that. It's called Warranty Hotel. And it's an app that allows you to store all of your warranties and receipts in an online cloud account. And you just upload a photo of the warranty, put a, you know, three pieces of information, the product name um, and the purchase date and the expiration date, and the app takes care of the rest. So it stores your information and all the warranties in the cloud, and then it'll actually alert you if you have any expiration dates coming up or um, anything about to expire. That's awesome. How do they get it? If they go to warrantyhotel.com or if they search Warranty Hotel in either the Google Play Store for Android or the App Store for iPhone. Awesome. Erica, thanks so much. Tell us a little bit about uh, what should a buyer be prepared for in terms of the exterior sort of type of things that, that uh, during their inspection? What are some of the things that you would want to walk them through it? Absolutely. Well, we're going to take them through the whole process of the house from roof down to the foundation, everything, exterior, basement, all the uh, mechanical pieces, structure, and then all the living spaces, especially this time of year um, when it's cold out, it's snowy, it's rainy. All the agents want to rush the people inside to sell them on the cosmetic aspects of the inside of the house, sure. which is you got to fall in love with that and you got to fall in love with the curb appeal. But curb appeal can just be lipstick for the mm -hmm. most part. Right. Uh, once you find that house that you've fallen in love with on the inside, before you go crazy, you should actually take a step back and actually look at the outside. And, you know, paint can cover up a lot of things. So you should really get up close, walk the property, you know, get up around the house if it's a wood exterior, look for signs of any sort of rot. Um, on windows, on trim, on corner boards, any area that shows any sort of visual signs of things. Uh, you, one of the things that we, we talked about sort of preparing for the show was the fact that, you know, you can sort of um, help people as the first time, the first showing of that home before they fall madly in love with it. And listen, I've been house hunting with my wife. She falls in love with everything. But you really should, there's a few things I want you to talk about, about what sort of what should people um, look for the first time they go, not necessarily at the home inspection, but the first time, to make sure that there's not some, some major issues. Yeah. Um, really, they should go and take a look at the property, the exterior, and get up close, touch the wood. It sounds kind of funny, but you know, wood, once it starts to rot, gets squishy, and it starts to, you can stick your finger through it right. in certain areas. And depending where the wood is, if it's a piece of trim, you know, just uh, around on a corner piece or on a side of a window, it's usually just a piece of pine, so it's a relatively inexpensive fix. But mm. if the rot now happens to be in a window, getting into the sill, working its way into like a bay window, you could go from what looks like just a piece of rot of trim could be, uh, require a full replacement of a window. Oh, wow. So you really got to kind of look at things because a window can cost you, a cheap window is $400, a bay window could be thousands of dollars versus right. trim, $20 for a 10-foot board. That's crazy, the, the, the range of expense that you could be faced with. A lot of people know about credit scores. They've heard of it. They understand a little bit. There's different companies with the scoring factor, but most people can't understand how to read a credit report. So we like to sit down with the clients, educate them first off how to read a credit report, understanding what is credit, what makes up a credit score, and how things impact their credit scores. Right. Um, a few of those things of that is, you know, you need at least three active accounts to even have a credit score. A lot of people think that if they had old accounts, they close the accounts. Well, those accounts will go away eventually, and now you don't have revolving time limit on there. Right. I think the I think the, the rule of thumb is is no credit equals bad credit um, because they don't have the ability to rate you as a client as a borrower. That's right. So it's really important to keep some open lines of credit open, even if you pay cash once in a while. Sort of uh, you know to use your credit cards, exercise that a little bit, even if you pay them off within then the next day. That's right. It's, it's a pretty wise move. Tell me, there's that's a that's a massive mystery for me. <laughs> How do they come up with uh, a twenty? It's it's still it's, it's still quite a mystery in the fact that uh, it is numeric, it's not alpha. Um, people think that if they have a collection on a credit report that it's really impacting their score by 100 points. 
Um, usually we like to take a step back, look at that report with them, and educate them as to where those points really are. We found out through uh, different scenarios that a 30-day late on a credit report is 10 points, a 60-day late is 20 points, and we now know that 90-day lates don't even count against your score. And whoa, whoa, whoa. 90-day late. So I'm on a, I, I have a particular credit card that I have not paid for 90 days. That will have zero impact on my credit score? Well, the impact that it would have if it still showed the 30 and the 60 prior to the 90, mm -hmm. but the actual, if you had all 90s on your credit report, you would not see a, see a score change. Wow. wow. Yeah. That's, that does make sense. It, no, yeah, it, it doesn't, <laughs> but it's, uh, you know, I think these credit reports were designed, you know, a long time ago when they designed them, and it's a flaw that's out there. It's just like uh, if you go online and get your credit report, you're going to get a different score than from a mortgage person or a banker or Let's auto dealership. We've defined this market as a super seller market. Uh, I think, again, inventory has been relatively constricted for the past few months. Yes, we celebrated the first day of spring a couple of days ago, and I think now we're full force in, in our spring market. Spring Don't you has agree? Sprung. Spring has sprung. <laughs> the spring has sprung, right. exactly. Now, as far as the, 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 the pre-approval that you're talking about, uh, do you think that there's, uh, forget about the pre-approval, do you think that there's additional contingencies that a seller has to be prepared for? Sure. Um, well, as I said, so one option was the, uh, the the pseudo bridge, if you want to call it that. Mm -hmm. Option number two is, is selling first, which really m more than not the sellers are doing. Mm -hmm. uh, they're putting their property in the market, hoping to find a buyer, and then finalizing their purchase of a home. So still, same process. You know, Get together with a mortgage person, talk about what they can afford after their home is sold. Right. right. I mean, some of the contingencies that I've seen you employ very effectively were uh, flexible close dates, because again, I think these buyers are willing to negotiate with the seller because of the constriction in the, in the inventory, and effective utilization of use and occupancy. Yep. And what is that? Tell me a little bit about that. Well, uh, as far as a delayed closing is concerned, your standard closing is 45 to 60 days. Mm -hmm. um, nowadays, uh, what I suggest to folks that are putting their property on the market is, hey, let's find a buyer who maybe can be a little bit more flexible as far as their closing time. And um, back to your, your show from uh, last week, it mentioned um, there's some folks that are saying, well, you know, they want to close 45, 60 days. Um, they need to get into that property right away. Well, that's not necessarily true. You know, a buyer may be willing to wait that 90 or 120 days to, to get the right home. And mm -hmm. it's not all about price. It's about terms. I just spoke with a seller this morning, as a matter of fact, and we were just chatting about that. They've got a buyer. We've got a great offer on the property, but they want to close, uh, you know, in the next 45 days. Um, however, you know, we're in discussions all day today. I'm going back and forth with the uh, the buyer's agent and saying, you know, can we work this out? Can we push it off until the middle of June? And the buyer's agent to work with us. Thanks.